Good day, everyone. Welcome to the fifth episode of this season's masterclass series. So far, we have seen how you can embed best practices for your company's service management with Service Desk Plus. Today, we will take a tour of all the latest features and latest enhancements in the cloud version of our ITSM platform. Before we begin, let me introduce myself. I'm Nisha Ravi, and I'll be the trainer for today's session. Here is what we have in store for you today. To begin with, we are going to see how you can create meaningful conversation experiences using blended conversations in Zia. Next up, we will find out how you can eliminate manual touch points and boost the productivity with single touch workflows. We also have certain enhancements to other modules like change, requests, contracts, and so on. Finally, we will also see how you can leverage advanced analytics to boost your service desk productivity. First up, we have the blended conversations feature in SIA. All of us use chatbots on a day-to-day -day basis, right? But without good context, this gives you a poor user experience, right? With blended conversation in Zia, you can create contextualized chatbot experience. You can create meaningful conversation workflows and ensure that your end users get the help that they need at the right time. Let us see all of this in action in Service Desk Plus and how you can configure such meaningful conversation workflows. Right now, I'm in the self-service portal and I am logged in as the end user. Let's say that I want to manage my virtual machine plan, and I'm going to do all of that using Zia, our AI-powered virtual assistant. I can access Zia from here. And let me say that I was talking about managing my virtual machine plan, right? So let us quickly give a few moments, and yes. Now, let me access the required action from here. And let me say that I would like Zia to help me manage my virtual machine plan. Now, Zia gives me a very personalized welcome message and gives me the list of options that I want to choose. So let me go with upgrading my virtual machine plan. Now, immediately, Zia lists all the options, all the suitable plans from which I can choose uh, one that suits my needs. So let me just quickly select an option. And now Zia will instantaneously create a service request so that I can uh, go ahead and manage my virtual machine plan. I can also access the ticket details right from here. Now let us go back to the technician view and find out whether the ticket has been created or not. This is the technician's portal. And let us go to the request list view. You can see that the request has been created right away. So this is the request that I raised to manage my virtual machine plan, right? And just now you saw how easy it is to manage all of that using Zia, which is our AI-powered virtual assistant. Now let us see how you can create such meaningful conversation workflows from the technician view. You can do that by going to Setup, and you can access Zia chatbot right from here. Make sure that you enable the blended conversations feature from here, and you can straight away start creating meaningful workflows by using our simple drag and drop canvas. Now, let us have a look at the different blocks and the components with which you can construct this workflow. With the response blocks, you can display the required message to your end users. For example, you can use the text card to display a specific message, and you can use the info card to give very specific information to your end users. You can collect contextual information from your end users using question blocks. So this could be in the form of an email, or you can collect media files from your users, and so on. You can enable your requesters to you can you can enable your requesters to you know. Uh, choose between different options. You can do that by using the choice blocks available here. You can present static options using the button blocks, and you can fetch your options dynamically using the dynamic button block. And you can render your choices quite dynamic and graphic using the choice card block. Now, in addition to these response blocks, we also have action blocks. With action blocks, Zia can perform different kinds of actions 
on the user's inputs and queries. With the jump block, you can divert the conversation workflow according to your needs. And with the fourth block, you can create multiple parallel paths and uh, ensure that there is multiple directions to your conversation, thereby giving better context. You can also perform operations, that is arithmetic operations, on the inputs that you gain from users. For example, you can calculate the total cost of delivery based on the PIN code or the distance that the user is giving as an input. And using Webhook, you can interact with third-party applications. For example, you can update the status of a ticket in real time. Now that we have seen all the components with which you can build a workflow, let us start building one right away. Now let's say that I want to collect uh, the feedback from my end users. So for now, I'm going to create a workflow for that. So let me use the text card to display a welcome message. And I'm going to give the block a name and I'm going to save the block. Next, let me collect the name of the user using the question block. So let me just type in the required question and give the block a name and let me click on save. Next up, I'm going to render my end user with suitable choices so that they share their uh, experience ratings. For that, I'm going to use the button block and choose the type of the button that I want. Let me quickly type the question right here. And let us quickly give the options. So I can make my options quite uh, graphical and very contextual. So let's say that you can rate the experience on three scales, one being good, the other being average, and the last one being unsatisfactory, or let us say that it's a poor experience. Now, let us give this block a name, and we will add it to the workflow. Now, I can have a quick preview of how this block would look like and how the conversation workflow would actually look for an end user. I can do that by using the preview option here. And here, let me say that I'm going to enter my name. And next, the, the next block, that is the choice block, is triggered. So I can immediately give the required uh, rating based on my experience. And after reviewing the entire conversation workflow, you can straight away publish it. And that would be available as one of the conversations under blended conversation. You can access these conversations as Zia actions within the Zia chatbot. Now that we have seen how you can build a conversation workflow, let us take a look at the workflow that we have to manage virtual machine plans. We have used the text block to display a personalized text message. And with the button block, we, can, we have used to uh, display different kinds of choices from which the end user can select their required option. And we have used the choice card uh, option to, di to display different kinds of virtual machine plans. We have used the webhook here to create a service request based on the input from the end user. And here, we have used the jump block to divert the conversation to the feedback loop that we have right here. Again, using the button block, we have used this to collect the required feedback from the end user. Now, coming back, we saw how you can create more a meaningful and uh, meaningful workflows to render your end users with very contextual chatbot experience. We saw how you can create multi-directional paths uh, using our drag and drop workflow builder, and how you can perform different actions like triggering web hooks, performing operations, collecting contextual information from your users, displaying personalized messages, how you can create dynamic choices and enable your end users to give the required inputs and so on. Next up, we are going to see how Zoho Circuit can integrate with Service Desk Plus Cloud and how it can help your business. IT teams generally perform a lot of repetitive tasks, but they might be critical in nature. But this eats up a lot of productivity, right? And even if you automate them, there are a lot of manual touch points. And again, this takes up a lot of time. Let us find out how you can eliminate all these manual touch points and boost productivity with single touch workflows. 
First off, let us have a quick look at what Zoho Circuit is all about. It is a no-code workflow automation engine that is available in Service Desk Plus. You can create a visual workflow by connecting different states and you can pass information from one state to the other. You can execute complex business logics with these visual workflows and so on. You can automate a variety of actions using single touch workflows. For example, you can run PowerShell scripts, execute database queries, perform actions on your Active Directory and a lot more. Now, how can single touch workflow automation help your business? As I said earlier, you can automate a variety of tasks. These could be very simple tasks to those that are cross-functional in nature and complex ones. For example, while you are onboarding your employees, you might have to provide them with software access or create a Microsoft 365 account or maybe update their details on a legacy database, right? You can automate all of that with a single touch. Next, you can also uh, you know, resolve incidents. You can uh, auto-remediate IT incidents. For example, if you are facing browser issues, you can immediately auto-remediate them with a single touch. You can also perform uh, change, change processes in your environment, and you can accelerate them quickly. For example, before upgrading your server, you need to take a backup of all the data, right? You can automate such um, critical repetitive tasks by using single touch workflows. So in all, it is going to help you reduce manual effort and boost the productivity of your IT team. You can automate workflows that span across different departments and involve both on-premise servers and uh, cloud applications. And thereby, you can automate all of that with a single touch. Let us see how you can configure all of this in Service Desk Plus. Right now, I'm in the technician view. And to configure Zoho Circuit, you can go to Setup. And under Applications and Add-ons, you can go to Integrations. You can enable Zoho Circuit right from here. After enabling Zoho Circuit, you will be able to access this integration as that is visible right here. As I said earlier, uh, you can create simple workflows by uh, on a, using a drag and drop canvas, right? You can uh, perform different tasks. You can automate complex actions as we were discussing just some time back. You can perform all these tasks in uh, either in a sequence or in parallel and so on. You can execute different operations by using functions. And these functions can be written using Deluge, which is our own uh, coding language. And you can also use Java, Python, Node.js, and so on. You can trigger webhooks. And you can also embed a circuit as a part of a larger circuit. You can use a bridge to automate different actions uh, in your uh, on in your on-premise applications. You can use the task engine to perform close API calls. You can use the DB engine to execute database queries. You can run shell commands on your uh, Linux machines. In addition to all of that, you can also perform different Active Directory tasks. You can add a user. You can reset password and so on. And all these actions are available right out of the box. You can also run PowerShell uh, scripts on your Windows machines. You can start a service. You can stop a service and do a lot more. So let's say that you want to create a workflow. For that, you can simply drag and drop a state. Mention the previous state here. Mention the present state here. Let's say that you want to add a user and mention the subsequent state. So you can create a visual workflow based on your unique needs. You can give the required configuration here, mention the input and output paths, and you are ready to go. You can access all the information related to your circuit configuration right from here. You can do that by going to circuit configuration and access different components. You can store the functions uh, that you can store the functions that are there to automate all your workflows. You can use webhooks to integrate and uh, to interact with third-party applications. You can store all the PowerShell scripts to automate different tasks. With the help of Bridge, 
you can automate different actions that involve your on-premise applications and servers. You can also store the credentials to access your remote machines that are involved in your workflow. And in addition to all of that, you can store files, tables, and so on. You can access these. Uh, you can access Zoho Circuit as a component by uh, using triggers, which are available for both requests as well as changes. And you can also consume Circuit as a node within the change workflow itself. To learn more and understand how these single touch workflows can help your business, you can watch our webinar on single touch workflows. You can access the webinar using the link that will be available in the chat section. Coming back, we saw how you can eliminate manual steps and automate different tasks using single touch workflows. And we also saw how you can create these workflows using a drag and drop canvas. In addition to all of that, you can perform different tasks like um, executing a PowerShell scripts or executing database queries or even um, performing actions on your Active Directory and a lot more. Next up, we have certain, we are going to see the different enhancements that we have in our change module. Governing a change process is quite complex, right? And you can make this governance a more, uh, you can make, you can actually structure and uh, make sure that you reduce deployment risk by providing the right information at the right time throughout the entire change process, right? Now, with the enhancements to the change module in Service Desk Plus, you can ensure that you provide relevant and contextual information across different stages of a change, right from the creation to the closure, to facilitate better decision making by your change stakeholders. Let us see how you can do that in Service Desk Plus. Right now, I am in the technician view. And let me take you to the change module. Now, let me say that I want to migrate all my applications from the on-premises to the cloud. And I'm going to create a change request for that. Let me select the required template from here. And by doing that, you can see that all the different fields have been auto-populated. And here under the submission stage, I get to know the different details like the change owner, the change manager, the impact, the urgency, the priority, and so on. As I scroll down, I can also capture different details like the services affected, the assets involved, the reason for the change, the description of the change, and a lot more. In addition to the submission stage, I can also capture details for the planning stage. So under the planning stage, I can give information about the impact details, the rollout plan, the backup plan, and also the checklist. I can also capture details about the release schedule too. And at the template level itself, I can loop in the required chain stakeholders, establishing governance, responsibility, and accountability for the entire change process. Now, let us take a look at one of the changes that we have created to ensure smooth migration. So here we see that this change is a multi-stage process, which goes from submission right up to closure. And under the planning stage, we can schedule a downtime so that you deploy these changes in your environment with minimal risk. And here you can see that we have captured the downtime details. And with the latest enhancements in Service Desk Plus, you can manage downtimes associated with different CIs. To do that, you can go to the CMDB module. And let's say that this server is being impacted by this change. Now, under the downtime tab, I can get to know all the downtimes that are associated with this server. And I can also track the downtime summary right from here. So this gives me real-time information about the downtimes that are associated with different CIs. I can also get a quick over a quick highlight and a quick bird's eye view of the downtimes involved from the relationship maps. So in addition to the different requests, the problems and changes that are associated with this CI, I can also track the active downtime, the scheduled downtime, and so on. So coming back to the change request that we were tracking, we saw how you can, uh, how you can submit the right details 
right from the change template, right? Now let, now let us see how you can configure all of that. You can do that by going to setup and under templates and forms, you can access change template. Let us open the template that we have for the migration process. So here you can see that you can capture relevant and contextual information for multiple stages that are involved in a change. For example, for the submission stage, you can capture different details like the change owner, the change manager, the impact and urgency, and so on. The template is a simple drag and drop canvas where you can create a new section simply by dragging and dropping it here. You can also collect contextual information using the existing fields and you can create new fields right from here. You can do all of that from the right hand pane that is visible on the template that is visible on your screen right now. And the details tab and the task tab will be available by default for all the stages of a change. Now, you can access all the different details for the submission stage, like the assets involved, the services affected. You can capture the reason for the change. You can capture the description and so on. Going to the planning stage, you can, you can uh, mention the planning details along with the submission details right during the creation of the change. You can capture details like the impact details, the rollout plan, the backout plan, the checklists that are involved to uh, govern your change and so on. You can also capture attachments for each of these details. You can also capture the uh, rele release, uh, you can also have release schedule as a part of your template and you can also capture the task that is involved for the planning stage. For the cab evaluation stage, you can capture attachments and the different tasks that are involved for this stage. Moving ahead to the implementation stage, you can capture the implementation details here and the different tasks that are involved while implementing a change. For user acceptance testing stage, you can capture the description details as well as the test plans uh, involved. Moving on to the release stage, you can capture the, the uh, description of the release and you can capture the additional attachments to, um, to help your change governance process. For the review stage, you can capture the description and the associated attachments. In addition to all of these stages and in addition to capturing relevant contextual information, you can also loop in different change roles right at the template level. You can specify individual users for different change roles that are involved. And you can also add a new change role right from here. Let's say that you can do this by simply dragging and dropping it. And you are going to create a new role called change evaluator. You can control the access permissions right from here. And you can create a new role then and there itself. You can also access the different tasks for governing the change and the form rules here. And you can make this change available for your end users by, uh, by enabling this checkbox. And you can also loop in specific user groups to control the accessibility of this change template. So coming back, we saw how you can customize the layout of uh, different stages of a change. We also saw how you can submit planning details like your rollout plan, your backout plan, right during the creation of a change. And we also saw how you can manage the downtime effectively for all the CIs that are involved in a change process. Next up, we are going to see the checklist feature for request module. When IT teams handle uh, service requests and resolve incidents, it is important for them to stay on track, right? Because this might involve a lot of complexities and they might also be involved in a lot of parallel tasks in addition to uh, resolving incidents and delivering services. So checklist feature in Service Desk Plus Cloud can help you maintain ticket fulfillment standards by monitoring different tasks throughout the entire process. Let us see how this can help IT teams to resolve incidents and deliver services consistently. Right now, I'm in the technician view, and let me take you to the request list view. Now, let's say that users in my organization are unable to access MS Teams, and 
I have a lot of tickets coming in, and this is one such ticket that I have received, which gives me uh, gives me the entire context about the incident. So under the details tab, I get to know all the details of the incident. In my ticket workspace itself, I can access the checklist that is involved to make sure that I complete, I keep track of different tasks, different reminders that are involved to resolve this incident swiftly. I can add a new checklist from here, and I can also associate checklists from a template. To resolve this uh, access application issue, I can use this checklist effectively to ensure that the right tasks are done. Now, I can collect different kinds of details like the application version, check whether the end user is authorized to access MS Teams, and so on. Now, during the resolution process, let me say that I'm going to check the access. And next, uh, let me, uh, next, by doing that, I, I can also check these additional details. So let me just fill in the app version. And let me say that the user is authorized to access MS Teams. So as and when I perform these different kinds of checklist tasks, you can also check the level of progress associated. And let me say that policy configuration changes are not required. And here you can see that all the, all the items that are listed within the checklist are completed. And I can go ahead and ensure that this is a success. And let me close the ticket right away. Now, you can see that uh, by using checklists, you can guide, you can make sure that your technicians stay on track and maintain standards while handling different incidents and delivering services. You can also ensure that your technicians fulfill the checklist items before they close the ticket. You can do that by going to automation and going to closure rules. Make sure that you mandate that all the technicians must close the associated checklist before they close the request, and you can also add these checklists to the template level itself. Now, let's see how you can create these checklists, customize them, and embed them at the template level itself. You can do that by going to Setup, and under Customization, you can ac access checklists. So to create a new checklist, you can, uh, you can use the button that's available here. Again, this is a simple uh, drag and drop canvas where you can uh, drag and drop the existing checklist items and create new items right from here. Let's say that in order to uh, you know, troubleshoot this MS Teams issue, you would like your IT teams to check whether there is a service issue. So I can simply drag and drop the field and give the required details here and click on save. So by doing that, you can ensure that your, your IT teams stay on track. And you can also get a quick preview of how the chest checklist would look like. You can also track all the checklist items at a single place. You can do that by going to checklist items, where you can access all the items at a central place. You can also embed checklists right at the template level. To do that, you can go to Setup and go to Templates and Forms and go to Incident Template. Now, using the uh, application sign-in issue template for, for which end users were raising access application issues, right? So let's go to this template and see how you can configure this. So under the Checklist tab, you can associate a checklist right from here. And you can create a new checklist right from here. And also, make sure that your technicians have the right uh, permission uh, to, to you know, manage all these checklists. You can do that by going to Setup. And under Users and Permissions, you can go to Roles. Let's say that I want to ensure that my site admin has the right permissions to manage checklists. So make sure that under Advanced Permissions, you enable options like adding request checklist, editing request checklist, and deleting request checklist. So by doing that, 
you can ensure uh, the IT technicians with the required roles have access permissions to manage checklists for both incidents as well as services. Coming back, we saw how uh, IT teams can make use of checklists to always stay on track while resolving incidents and delivering services. We also saw how you can customize checklists and embed them right at the template level to handle both incidents as well as services. Next up, we have en enhancements to our contract module. With the latest enhancements in Service Desk Plus, let us find out how you can manage your contracts better by going right into Service Desk Plus and finding out what these enhancements are all about. So this is the technician view. And let us quickly go to the contracts module. Now, let's say that we have a Dell maintenance uh, service contract, and we would like to maintain all the, Dell, uh, all the Dell products that are there in our organization. Under the details tab, I can capture relevant information like the contract vendor, the contract term, and so on. Now, with the enhancements, I can ensure that the contract has an indefinite validity period, and I can also re auto renew the contracts. So you can, uh, by enabling auto renewal, you can mention the duration of the prolongation, and you can also you can also choose to notify the required stakeholders. And under the uh, under the conversations tab, you can capture all the conversations at a central place. You can capture different details like the emails, the notes that are involved in this contract, and so on. You can add a note to. Uh, to share specific information with all the technicians, and, can, and you can choose to notify technicians by email. You can also track the usage level of your contracts. Here, you can see that you can see the number of times that the contract has been invoked and also the invocation cost. You can track the requests and assets with which this contract has been uh, associated and for which this contract has been invoked. Now, we also have templates for uh, configuring, uh, for managing uh, the kind of details that you collect while creating a contract. Let us find out how you can configure all of that. You can do that by going to Setup, and under Templates and Forms, you can access Contract Template. Similar to other templates that we have in Service Desk Plus, this is again a very simple drag and drop canvas where you can create new sections by dragging and dropping them here. You can uh, add relevant fields from the existing fields that are available here. Let's say that you want to map the CIs that are involved with the contract. You can simply drag and drop them right here. You can also create new fields from the right-hand side as, as that is visible. And you can also control the access permissions for different contract types. You can do that by going to Setup. And under Customization, you can go to Contract Management. While creating a new contract type, you can give the required uh, type name, you can give the description, and you can also mention the accessibility permissions. To do that, you can go with individual organization roles, and you can also choose to uh, loop in the required technicians according to your needs. So coming back, we saw how you can manage your contracts by specifying indefinite validity terms. You can also manage the auto renewals for different contracts. You can track the conversation associated with the contract at a single place. And you can also add notes to your contracts. You can, uh, you can configure a contract template so that you collect relevant information. And finally, you can also restrict the accessibility of different contract types to different uh, stakeholders in your organization according to your needs. Next up, we are going to see how you can leverage the power of advanced analytics to improve service desk productivity. Now, uh, now it is all over to our Analytics Plus team to help us with this. Great. Thank you. So uh, I'm Nicholas, the product expert from Manage Engine Analytics Plus, an outstanding business intelligence solution. Leveraging my extensive experience working alongside IT leaders in diverse industries, 
I have assisted them in extracting valuable insights from their IT data, enabling them to make informed decision. So today, I'm excited to showcase the capabilities of Analytics Plus through the Services Plus integration, which can greatly enhance the productivity, efficiency, workflows, and the overall quality of decision-making for its users. So in this episode, we would be uh, discussing on how to integrate and set up the in Analytics Plus with Services Plus and how to leverage the performance dashboards uh, and reports to track the efficiency and enhancing help this productivity through advanced analytics and how to cultivate a culture of data-driven decision-making within the help desk. So let's get right into the uh, setting up the integration. So before we move out to set up the integration, uh, I would like to highlight on the prerequisite, which is very simple. So in order for you to integrate the Services Plus with Analytics Plus, you need to be an administrator in both Services Plus and the Analytics Plus. So I'm going to take you to the product and uh, you know, walk you through how the integration can be done. So I have my Services Plus right here. So for you to integrate uh, as an admin, it's just that you go to the setup option right here and under the apps and add-ons, you see Analytics Plus. Right, so um, here's where I would like to run a poll because um, I would like to understand if any of you still see the Zoho Analytics integration instead of the Analytics Plus so that we can reach out to you and help you enable the Analytics Plus integration from the back end, right? So coming back to the integration. So clicking on the Analytics Plus will get you into the integration page where the integration procedure is pretty simple and straightforward. Just click on Enable Analytics Plus and confirm the uh, prompt, and that's it. Within a minute or two, probably, the integration will complete, and you will see the data fetched into your Analytics Plus. Right. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, it not even took a minute. And um, by default, uh, the integration will, or the synchronization of data from the Services Plus to the Analytics Plus can happen in various uh, periodic synchronization, like uh, monthly, uh, daily, or weekly basis. But you still have an option to make it for every two hours, right? So once you set that, for every two hours, the data from your service desk plus will be automatically fetched into your analytics plus and will be reflected in all the reports and dashboards that you create. And you also have a, an option to sync now using which you can manually do an instant sync if you wish to have the latest data available in the reports and dashboards probably to present in a meeting, right? So uh, let's explore the user interface of the Analytics Plus. And before we do that, uh, I would like to uh, you know, discuss or help you familiarize the terminologies that you see on the screen. So workspace, tables, reports, and dashboards. So these are all the terminologies which can make you more acquainted with the Analytics Plus, right? So, Workspace is nothing but a place or a dedicated place where you can find the data, reports, and the dashboards from your services plus. So it's it's more like a folder where you can put together the related items, right? So table is nothing but a data in the form of rows and columns. And reports, as you know, it's the better representation for getting the right insights. And dashboard is a collection of reports in a single pane of window. Right. So with that being said, I'll get you to the product. So this is the Analytics Plus user interface. And once you integrate the Services Plus with Analytics Plus, you'll gain immediate access to a vast array of over 300 plus reports and dashboards, resulting in significant time saving. So it is important to note that these pre-configured reports were carefully curated based on specific requests from help desk managers 
within our user communities. So on the left hand side, you have a data section which collects the information from all the modules of the service dashboards. Right. If you look at, uh, I'm, I'm going to select the table with the name change. So this table contains the data from the change module. And similarly, if you go over and let's say I'm going to select the request. So the request table holds the data from the incidents and the service request module. So all the predefined reports and the dashboards are built based on the data, these tables right here, right? So uh, in a typical scenario, obtaining correlated insights would require writing VLOOKUP formulas or queries even, right? However, with Analytics Plus, you can rely on the ready to use data sets. The data model in Analytics Plus is designed in such a way that the data between different modules of your service test plus is already linked and prepared for a cross module analysis, right? So for instance, you can effortlessly um, explore the relationship between the number of problems associated with the request and the number of incidents raised or the service requests raised due to unsuccessful changes. So if you look at this report, it compares the number of unsuccessful changes versus the number of requests triggered due to the unsuccessful changes. So if you notice, for the month of March and April, there is a significant spike in the number of uh, tickets that were created due to the unsuccessful changes. Therefore, it is very important for you to be very efficient in terms of change management practices, and thereby you can keep the number of requests triggered due to the change in a very optimal range, right? So throughout the seamless integration of Service Test Plus with Analytics Plus, you can harness the power of data analysis without the need of complex formulas or manual data linking. So the meticulously developed reports and dashboards enables you to uncover some meaningful correlations, identify patterns, and make informed decisions to improve your help desk operations. So let's unveil the bigger picture. So in this section, we will dwell into how tracking efficiently aligns with our webinar agenda of leveraging performance dashboards and reports. We'll explore a scenario where a specific request category experiences prolonged resolution times unintentionally overlooked by the help desk manager. However, upon realization, proactive uh, measures such as um, you know, mentorship programs, specialized trainings, and dedicated agent assignment workflows are all implemented to address the issues, right? So continuous service improvements remains a cornerstone of a service desk or a health desk operation, necessitating a comprehensive report to measure the impact of these initiatives on the resolution time. So therefore, I'm going to introduce a report which is called resolution time comparison. You can effortlessly compare the resolution times for the categorized request for um, you know the requests that were resolved three months ago versus the average resolution time for this quarter. So if you take this particular uh, you know, category for that matter, it took five days on an average to resolve uh, the tickets, incidents, or the service requests from this particular category called network access over three months ago. But whereas if you look at it, it, is, it has reduced considerably and it just took three days on an average to resolve these categories of requests. So this implies the effectiveness of the uh, initiatives that you have taken in order to uh, train the technicians or you know, implement the workflows accordingly and all of that. So this is how you get to track the efficiency of the uh, you know, initiatives you've taken based on the current trends. So to track the efficiency further, we provide pre-built reports and dashboards that serves as a powerful tool 
for monitoring the help desk progress in various ways. So if you are if you'd like to explore the you know predefined reports and dashboards, you can go to the report section where you can find, uh, as I mentioned, close to 300 plus predefined reports and dashboards respectively. Right. So now that we have seen how we can effectively track the efficiency of our help desk, let's move ahead and find out how to enhance the help desk productivity through advanced analytics. Right. So in the fast paced world, we are actually uh, we are actually um, you know faced with a lot of uh, concerns, right? So maximizing productivity is something which is the ultimate goal. Imagine the possibilities of revolutionizing your help desk operations by tapping into the hidden insights with your data is something which is critical. So one of the critical elements in enhancing the help desk productivity lies in the ability to predict the future outcomes based on your past data. So by leveraging advanced analytics features like forecasting and trend analysis, you can gain invaluable insights into the future performance of your help desk. So let's embark a scenario where you can find yourself needing to closely monitor the resolution of the service level agreements called SLA in your department. It is through the power of Analytics Plus that you discover an unsettling revelation. Your team is currently off the, off the track, right? So to address this challenge effectively and secure the necessary approval from your upper management to hire additional staff, you must present a compelling case that demonstrates the potential consequences of maintaining the current workload, right? So let me show you an example. So this um, report shows you the SLA compliance trend in a time series. And uh, as you could see, we have the data till uh, February, 2023. So what I've done here is this dotted lines are the forecasted trends. So in order for you to forecast uh, the future trends, you go to settings and select the forecast and you can add the forecast by clicking on the add forecast button. So for this, I've already made a forecast uh, for the next 12 months and this is how it looks like. So harnessing the capabilities of sophisticated forecasting algorithm, you set out to predict the SLA percentage for the next 12 months the results are both revealing and thought provoking. So the forecast indicate significant dips on various months, as you could see, right? It's not in a progressive trend. It does have significant dips in it. So with this compelling data, you prepare a persuasive business case that emphasizes the urgent need to augment your help desk team with an additional technician. Because if this trend continues with the workload that you have, you can definitely not you know, achieve the SLA that you have already agreed. So through data-driven decision-making, you can showcase how this strategic move will enhance help, the, help this productivity and ultimately drive better customer satisfaction. So now that we have seen how we can enhance the help desk productivity, there is a question that will arise. How can you effectively share the forecasted SLA reports with your manager? Luckily, Analytics Plus offers a wide variety of seamless sharing options, whether it's granting your manager direct login access to reports, providing published links for easy and secure access to the reports, without requiring a login even, or embedding the reports directly to the Service Desk Plus so that you can ensure your manager can effortlessly access and review the reports without having to leave the Service Desk Plus screen. So let me show you how you can share and publish reports in Analytics Plus. To share this report to your manager or any I official, you can just go to share and select the first option, which is share this view where you have an option to enter the email address of the respective person and you can click on share. 
an email will be sent with a link to access this particular report, clicking on to which they will be prompted to log in and then they can view the reports. Right? So this is one way of sharing. And let's say uh, I'm going to publish it so my manager doesn't have to log in to Analytics Plus. All that he needs to do is just click on the link or you know, go to the, um, the Service to Plus dashboard where I can embed this report so that without having to leave the uh, Service to Plus, he can view the report. So click on Publish View and select the option which says Access Without Login. So this will generate a URL. You can just copy that. And let me show you how you can embed it in the Services Plus. So let me go to the dashboards and uh, this plus icon right here, you can just click on it. And let me name this dashboard as SLA. And you can go to customize where you have an option to select new URL widget, which allows you to embed the analytics dashboard in here. So you can just paste the URL that you copied. And again, you can just mention the name of the report. You can just add this URL and update the layout. There we go. We have successfully embedded the report where created that was created using Analytics Plus in Services Plus. So you don't have to move out and it, you can just view the reports from here itself, right? So well, that being said, we have seen how we can improve uh, our help desk productivity using the Analytics Plus, but it's not just that. Analytics Plus is not just for your Services Plus, but can also connect with tons and tons of data sources. And I would like to showcase a few of them. So these are the few data sources uh, you know, that Analytics Plus could connect with. And um, here are some um, you know, features that we offer, I mean, that Analytics Plus offers. So uh, the features like data blending. So we've seen how uh, the data blending works across various modules of Services Plus, but Analytics Plus can also blend data across different application. And you also have this AI assistant, which is uh, known as Ask Zia. So, which is more like a chat GBT like feature. You can just key in your question in plain English and it will produce the results in the form of reports. Similarly, we have a lot of features in Analytics Plus. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, we couldn't discuss all of them. However, if you're really interested, you can always drop an email um, to the email that you see on the screen so that we can discuss a lot more in detail. So with well, that being said, uh, it brings to the end of my session today. I hope you liked uh, the capabilities and I believe you will click on Enable Analytics Plus and integrate with uh, the, uh, the Services Plus with Analytics Plus to boost your health desk performance. Thank you so much for this opportunity and I'm looking forward to meeting you in another interesting webinar. We hope Analytics Plus integration will help you improve your service desk efficiency. Before we wind up today's episode, let us have a quick recap of all the features that we saw today. We saw how you can craft meaningful conversation workflows with blended conversations in Zia to render more contextual help to your end users. Thereby, you can contextualize the chatbot experience and ensure that they get the required help that they need. Next, we also saw how you can uh, configure single touch workflows with Zoho Circuit integration in Service Desk Plus Cloud. By doing that, you can eliminate all manual touch points and boost productivity of your Service Desk. You can automate complex workflows that span across different departments, and you can also automate those functions which you can also automate those tasks which involve both on premise as well as cloud applications. Next up, we saw how you can uh, create, how you can submit different, uh, different uh, relevant as well as contextual information through multiple stages of a change with the latest enhancements to our change template. Also, 
we saw that you can help your IT teams and IT technicians stay on track with the help of checklist feature while resolving incidents as well as delivering services. In addition to all of that, we also saw how you can optimize contract management with different kinds of enhancements. You can, you can track the different conversations within a single tab. You can add notes. You can track the extent of usage of your contracts and do a lot more. Finally, we saw how you can leverage the advanced analytics using Analytics Plus and help boost the productivity of your IT teams. To learn more about Service Desk Plus, you can go through our admin guide and have a look at the latest features that we have in Service Desk Plus from our release notes. You can watch our previous masterclass videos on our YouTube channel. You can also interact with the peers of our industry on Manage Engine Pit Stop. You can also raise new feature requests in our community portal. In case you would like to reach out to our support team, you can use the link that is given on your screen. And you can also write to us at hello at servicedeskplus.com. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. We hope to see you again in the next season. Thank you.